Day two of the NCAA tournament is here, baby. And yesterday was nothing short of amazing. Oakland, wow, look at that, baby. They were able to pull off the first upset of the tournament. And trust me, I bet there's going to be more today. I'm going to dive into a few of my best bets. Let's get into it. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Noble Living, back with another DYF Bets video where I'm breaking down my favorite picks and plays of the day as you just try to get to the bag together and make some money. Now, yesterday, officially on the channel, we did not start off the tournament the way that we wanted to. Only two and four on the day. We cashed it on Sanford spread. Late night comeback by them. Again, opportunity for you to grab them at like plus 14 live. Great comeback for them. NC State spread no sweat bet there they went out right i told you guys could have sprinkled on the money line i thought they were winning i had them in my bracket now we did have a few tough losses Akron on the spread they kind of kept it close a little bit late but then creighton pulled away just too much offense there in the end mcneese i don't know that was just a terrible bet i mean looked like a high school team out there just a little bit overvalued i guess colorado state as well their offense just went dismal on them and then drake oh my goodness the drake bulldogs back to back years Drake last year had a lead over Miami with about eight points with about six minutes left to go, and they blew the lead. Yesterday against Washington State, seven-point lead with about five minutes left to go, and they blew the game. So that was a tough loss. So two and four on the day officially. We do have one futures bet pending. That is the Purdue money line. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys a few more best bets, and I'm going to give you another future that is going to also have a very strong chance to cash because of what happened yesterday. You guys don't want to miss that. If you are enjoying these videos and liking the channel, please smash that subscribe button, share this with somebody who's looking for some college basketball best bets but also make sure that you guys are liking this video as well so we continue to grow the algorithm together i appreciate all the love and support now let's dive into these best bets so for my first best bet of the day, we are going to go to an afternoon matchup. And we're going to go to this New Mexico and Clemson game. This is one of the games that we covered inside of our breakdown, the Loot Riders breakdown, the stream with Shark Clark and myself. And we chose New Mexico minus two in that matchup. And I have to 100% agree. You can do the one and a half if your book has that two and a half. That's fine. But I'm going to do the money line minus 135 odds here. Now, I like this matchup for New Mexico as they're taking on a Clemson team that truthfully I think sneaked into the tournament. And I think New Mexico is just a team in the better form. Now, they went into their Mountain West Conference tournament needing to win four games in four days to pull out the championship. And that's absolutely what they did. They beat Air Force, which was okay, a decent win. But then they beat Boise State, which we've seen that was a tough defense there. We saw them beat Colorado State, which is another tournament team. And then they beat San Diego State, who also plays today in the tournament. So they literally beat three tournament teams to go to the NCAA tournament. And this is a New Mexico team that I think is just well poised for this situation. They're led by Jalen House there, but they also have Donovan Dent, they have Jamal Mashburn, so that dynamic guard play of New Mexico is really what they lean on, and that is why they're such a potent offense, ranked 39th in offensive efficiency, but they also push the ball a lot, they're 8th in tempo, but they can do that without turning over the ball. 15th in turnover percentage. So you love to see that. On the other side of the ball, Clemson, they just have not been as good to me as I think they can be to end the season. They were really lackluster. They lost in the first round of the AC tournament to Boston College, 76-55. to That game wasn't even close. They lost to end the regular season against Wake Forest, 81-76. Then they lost uh, two games before that against Notre Dame, 69-62 on the road. So those are just really bad losses to me. I mean, those are all three teams that are not in the tournament. And now you're a New Mexico team that's coming into this game, game off of four straight conference wins in a knockout situation. They have the better offense. They like to play fast. And Clemson does have a strong offense, 24th in offensive efficiency, but they don't like to play as fast. And I think that this is a team here in this situation, in this matchup, where it's just going to benefit the New Mexico. They've got the better coach in Richard Pitino there. We've seen what he's been able to do in tournament times before with Minnesota. So I think New Mexico is just a team with the better momentum that's playing the better ball. I like the value that we are getting on them here in this spot. So just give me New Mexico on the money line, minus 135, as I believe that they're in the better form. Clemson, to me, if they're going to try to get into a shootout with this New Mexico team, it favors New Mexico because of the two teams, they have the better defense. New Mexico is ranked 22nd in defensive efficiency, 23rd in three-point field goal percentage. So they're going to take away the three-point line, 57th in effective field goal percentage. So they're also going to try to limit the amount of shots that Clemson has and also force a good amount of turnovers as well. So let's go to New Mexico as our first best bet of the day. For our second best bet of the day, we're going to go with another money line play here. And we're going to go with Texas A&M on the money line. Now, I'm very high on Texas A&M. Actually, you guys know how I feel about Texas 
playing them. I've been breaking them, them down all year. So I'm not going to go down into too much of in-depth analysis on them. But they are playing a Nebraska team that lives and dies by the three-point line, okay? Nebraska ranked 33rd in offensive efficiency, 62nd in effective field goal percentage, and then the top 100 in college basketball, both on the three-point and the two-point line. But for me, this is a Texas A&M team that's playing their best basketball right now. We saw them pick up some momentum there in the SEC Conference Tournament where they beat Ole Miss. They also beat Kentucky before falling to Florida, and they really blew that game against Florida, in all honesty, because they had a double-digit lead late in that game, and Florida was able to come back. And I think this is a matchup here with Texas A&M can play tough defensively. Texas A&M is ranked 56 in defensive efficiency, but I think the key in this game is the offensive glass. Texas A&M is the number one offensive rebounding team in the country, and guess what? Nebraska is not that very good of a rebounding team. They lack the size here, and I also like the fact that that Texas A&M has a player like Way Taylor, a guard who can take over a game at any time. Now, field goals have been hard for Texas A&M this year. We know that they're ranked 345th in effective field goal percentage. So, you know, they have to hit shots. And we know Nebraska is going to look to shoot a lot of threes. We know they're going to look to push the tempo a little bit. I've read a stat that Nebraska is like 0-7 in their last tournament games. And then we've also seen Coach Fred Hoiberg when he was at Iowa State. Besides that one time they went on the run to the Sweet 16, he's typically lost in the first or second round. I think this Nebraska team is starting to turn it around is in that position now where they're starting to get that national clarity. And I think they'll return back to the tournament. But this is just a bad draw in an 8-9 matchup that I think favors Texas A&M. So give me Texas A&M on the money line. I think we get good value at them at minus 105. All right. So two bets down. I've got a few more left for you guys. And this next game is going to be a late night matchup. I'm going to give you guys two plays in this last game. We've got Grand Canyon taking on St. Mary's. And I think this is a Grand Canyon game that a lot of people have them circle to win this game rightfully so because I do like Grand Canyon in this matchup. Now, I'm going to go with two different lines here in terms of this Grand Canyon team today. We're going to go with the under 131 and a half, and we're also going Grand Canyon plus five and a half. So I kind of like both of these picks. Now, the line has moved in favor to the over, but I'm taking the under because both of these teams are defensive. Both of these teams are scrappy. We know that same marriage is one of the slowest paced teams in all of the country. They don't like to play fast. 358th in adjusted tempo. 14th in defensive efficiency, third in effective field goal percentage on the defensive side of the ball. St. Mary's is a great team defensively, but I think we've seen their offense been able to struggle at times, and I think that's where Grand Canyon has the door open for them. Grand Canyon has the 49th toughest defense in the country, and they also keep teams playing slow on the offensive side of the ball, but they have a strong offense, ranked 61st in offensive efficiency, and they also get to the free throw line a lot and be able to hit a high rate of free throws and they keep you from hitting shots on the defensive side of the ball. Ninth and effective field goal percentage on the defensive side of the ball. Now, Grand Canyon, they have the size. They have the length. They have the athleticism to keep up with the St. Mary's team. They are led by a guy named Ty and Grant Foster. And they also have Ray Harrison as well on the team. Two guys who can really be able to rally this team. Now, this is a Grand Canyon team that went 17-4 and four in conference play. And was able to win both of their conference tournament games in the WAC to be able to get here in this position today. None of those games were close in the conference tournament. Tournament. Obviously, this is a huge step up in class for them. We've seen this Grand Canyon team beat a San Francisco team, another West Coast Conference team earlier in the non-conference schedule. They did. They played South Carolina hard. They beat San Diego State. They beat Liberty. They beat Louisiana Tech. So they played some tougher opponents, and they've been able to beat top 100 opponents on Ken Palm. We're getting five and a half points here. I think that's just way too many points for St. Mary's team that is going to play slow. I'm not saying Grand Canyon is going to win this game outright, even though I do have them in my bracket winning outright, but I think St. Mary's is just too many points when they play too slow, and we've got two defensive teams, and we've seen St. Mary's offenses when it comes down to the tournament time go cold here. Ken Palm has is a 69-65 win for St. Mary's, so we're covering that 5.5 point number. It is going to go over the current total that we see, but we have seen games go under, especially with some more of these defensive mind teams, like with the Colorado State game yesterday. We also saw that in some of the earlier matchups with, like, with Mississippi State, Michigan State, so I'm going to go with the under under here, and I'm also going to go Grand Canyon plus the points, as this is one of my upset picks of the day. But I think that Grand Canyon has enough offense to keep up here. But because of the pace and speed that St. Mary's plays with, it should be able to keep this game pretty close here. So let's lock those in as the third 
and fourth best bet of the day. Now, for our final best bet of the day, we are going to go with a money line parlay here. I'm going to take Alabama on the money line. I'm parlaying that with TCU on the money line. That should get you almost a plus 100 odds around minus 105 or so, depending on when you lock this in. We talked about this game as well on the stream that we did, Shark Lark and myself. But I like both of these teams to pick up the win. Now, now we'll say I think Alabama could be on upset alert against College of Charleston because they do have the offense that can keep up with Alabama. But I'm going to go with Alabama in this matchup because of the fact that Alabama can shoot the ball from three very well. They like to push the tempo. And their offense is so strong that even Charleston puts up 80 points. They really need to be able to score 85-90 to keep up with Alabama. This is a turret team that's ranked 11th in tempo, 3rd in offensive efficiency, 11th in effective field goal percentage, 8th in 2-point percentage, 25th in 3-point percentage, so they can kill you from any type of way, and they offensive rebound at a high rate as well. We saw them get upset in the first matchup in against Florida in the SEC tournament, but I think this is an Alabama team that struggled down the stretch, but that's because their back end of their schedule is very back-loaded with the top teams in the SEC. They literally had to go play at Kentucky, then they had a win against Ole Miss, then they had to play Tennessee, then they had to travel to Florida before beating Arkansas in overtime and then playing Florida again in the conference tournament. So it's like those are four or five tough teams that they had to play back to back to back. But I think that kind of prepared them for this matchup today against the Charleston team. That is decent. That's been able to run through the Colonial Athletic Association. They're currently on a hot win streak, 12, winning 12 games in a row, one of the longest streaks inside the entire country. But for me, I just don't think it's their offense is good enough. I don't think that their non-conference schedule prepared them for this matchup. And I think that this is a matchup here that it's just too big of a step up in class. And I don't think they have a fast enough offense to be able to keep with Alabama. So give me Alabama on the money line here. And we're parlaying that with TCU on the money line, who is taking on Utah State. Now, Ken Palm has this as a one-point win for TCU. And I think Utah State can compete in this game. We've seen them be strong defensively, 67th in defensive efficiency, and also strong from the three point line 37th in offensive efficiency but what utah state likes to do is pound the ball on the inside and that could be their favor and advantage today because this is a tcu team that really has not guarded the two-point line as well as they should have but tcu is a scrappy team and that matters come march they crash the offensive glass ranked 20th in offensive rebounding they're ranked they play at a decent pace at about 63rd in offensive tempo but they also force a good amount of steals and turnovers on the defensive side of the ball which should be able to give them extra possessions and this is is not a Utah State team that shoots the ball from three good at all. Ranked 270th in the three-point percentage from behind the line, and we saw that hurt them in that San Diego State game where they lost in their Mountain West Conference tournament, and they even just didn't even look that good in the Mountain West Conference tournament, in all honesty, because they had to go into overtime to beat a very bad Fresno State team. So for me, I think TCU has the better team. They have the better experience in this situation. If Jameer Nelson Jr. if Emmanuel Miller can step up for TCU, also led by Jamie Dixon, who's had his struggles in conference tournament and tournament NCAA tournaments in the past dating back to his times at Pitt but we've seen him be able before be able to make a deep run when they went back to the Elite Eight in 2009 he's been to the Sweet 16 a few times so he's been there before we just need now to see him be able to kind of get some momentum going here and I think this is a decent matchup for him to be able to do it I don't know if they cover that three and a half four point spread but I do think they win this game so give me TCU on the money line parlay that with Alabama on the money line to almost get to plus 100 value now for our final best bet of the day we're going to lock in another future. So now if you pull up the south side of your bracket now that Kentucky has lost, right, it looks a little bit different. Houston is obviously still the number one team, but Marquette is now the number two seed. They've been the two seed, but now their path to the final four is a little bit easier, in my personal opinion, because they're either going to go against NC State or Oakland if they're able to get past Western Kentucky today and then pass out of Florida or Colorado in their next matchup, which I think they should be able to do both. Now, I read a stat that when you look at the national championship, Champions, there are teams that have ranked in the top 30 in the offensive and defensive efficiency. That's what happened in the last about 15 national champions. A team that's ranked in the top 30 in the offensive and defensive efficiency have won the title. Well, guess what? Marquette ranks both in both those categories. So they're one of the teams that are contenders. And a lot of people have Marquette going all the way or going to the final four. And I do in my bracket have them going to the final four. Actually, I have them losing, but it's okay. I'm going to lock in Marquette to the final four plus 550 on my book. I think this is a great five to five, five and a half to one odds value that we're getting here because now they don't have to go through Kentucky. Now, as long as they get through Western Kentucky and Colorado, like I mentioned, they're going to face NC State or they're going to face Colorado in the Sweet 16. And now 
they're going to have a showdown with either Houston, Texas A&M, James Madison, maybe Wisconsin. Like, they're going to be able to get a shot into the Final Four, and I like the value that we're getting off of here. And if they make it to the Elite Eight, unless they're playing Houston, we can now be able to hedge off of that. So lock in that future. Marquette to make the Final Four at plus 550 now that, that Kentucky is lost and that south side of the bracket has opened up some things for them. And I think that's a good look and a nice little way to kind of give ourselves a little bit of money to play with heading into the second weekend and see what other futures that we can lock in if see after what happens today with some of these upsets and maybe tomorrow and sunday as well all right my friends so we've got two futures locked in here in the ncaa tournament we've got purdue to win it all at plus 700 we've got marquette to make the final four at plus 550 but then also for our other best bets for today we're going to go with new mexico on the money line we're going to texas a&m on the money line we're going grand canyon plus five and a half grand canyon st mary's under 131 and a half alabama and tcu in a little bozo pad money line parlay for other picks and plays that i'm going to add throughout the day for my live snipes and call outs make sure you click the link in the description join the free discord group can't wait to see you guys and hopefully you guys are making money and not getting upset had a few losses yesterday but it's okay it's a long tournament there's a lot of time to bounce back my friends stick with us and stick with your gut as well don't throw in the towel just yet and make sure you're practicing bankroll management a lot of games so you got to make sure that you're spreading out your money accordingly so this way you guys can withstand the heat all right let's get after it i'll see you guys tomorrow and as always dictate your fate and let's get to that cheddar later game